Glory to God. Amen. We greet our brethren here who are present and the ones who are following us online with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the Gospel according to John. John 4, chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 21, 21, 22, 23, and 24. John, no, Gospel John, John, chapter 4, from verse 21 to 24. Let's read it. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mount nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to hear another song. When will it be? Is the name of the song.
Glory to God. My brethren, we hear, we see in this chapter the way, the best way, the most efficient way to evangelize. Jesus, in this chapter, he gives a, um, a lesson to man, to the world, uh, evangelical world, of how we need testify of what we are experiencing. In the end of chapter 3, you're going to see John the Baptist. He was fulfilling his role. He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. And now John the Baptist, he was approached by the Pharisees. They were concerned that Jesus was becoming better, more well-known than he was, and that Jesus may have been baptizing more people than John the Baptist himself. And when this news comes to the ears of John the Baptist, he says, well, that's how it is. May I go diminish, but may the Son, Jesus, may grow. So John the Baptist here, prophetically speaking, he points out to the role of the church, to the role of the Christian man, to the, the one who is a believer, saved in Jesus. So now, when it comes to the knowledge of Jesus, of what was happening, the concern of the Pharisees, surely was not actually the number of the people being baptized, but also by the crowds following Jesus and the fame of Jesus that was growing for all of what Jesus was doing. And now Jesus, to prevent a, confront, a direct confrontation with them, because it was not the moment, according to God's time, was not the right time for confrontation. Why is that? Because what was prophesied regarding Jesus regarding the death of Jesus, regarding his role before actually regarding the spiritual aspect of man was going to take place, but in God's time. Not at the time that the Pharisees wanted to happen. So Jesus goes out of that environment. He leaves Judea and goes to Galilee. And in this trip, in this departure, Jesus goes, arrives in a place called the Well of Jacob. It was a place that was very well known because it was a place where the women would go to pick up water. It was the Well of Jacob, Father Jacob. It was a place very well known in the region, this well. And it was there where people would take water for for the home for to pick, cook food and for people to bathe in it was a very well known place and it was a place where the women would go to pick up water but the bible says that the time in which jesus arrived in this place was already noon and there he meets with a woman called uh, Samaritan, a, a woman who was Samaritan, and when she approaches him, to him, and Jesus was alone because his disciples are also tired from a long trip, they went to a town close to the region to bring food, and Jesus was then alone. And Jesus now meets with this woman, and when she comes close to perform her role and picking up water then Jesus begins to have a conversation with this woman and he asks her woman give me something to drink he made the same contact with this Samaritan woman so in other words it was a, a very simple humble way and she quickly she begins to in this dialogue, dialogue with Jesus, 
she begins to expose her culture. She said, how can you, being a Jew, ask me for water? And then Jesus begins to uh, approach, come, coming closer to her, showing to her he, his own role regarding men. And it is interesting that the Jews and the Samaritans, they didn't like each other. They did not communicate with, her, with each other. They did not even approach each other. There was uh, rivalry between them. The Samaritans, they were on one side and the Jews were on the other side. There was no type of closeness that could not be. Just so you can have an idea, if it was a rabbi, a rabbi went there, he would die of thirst. He would die of thirst, but he would not ask water to this woman, because she was Samaritan. If there was nothing for him to, to take water with, in fact, there was not. In fact, he was going to die of thirst because this culture, this rivalry between these two people, these two races, they kept this rivalry. But Jesus, he came to the world to break any type of any type of of, of situation any type of uh, preconce preconception on or racism we can say so jesus introduced himself to her not as a common man but as the messiah the son of god the one who came to the world to bring peace to bring salvation, to bring a hope, to bring the solution, to bring the healing to man's soul. So when Jesus, at this moment, he overcomes any type of barrier, Jesus here, he comes to show to us that the project of God, the project of salvation of man, the project that God has established in heaven to reach man is above everything. It's above culture, is above, we can even say, of any type of ideology, religious ideology, or uh, moral, any human reason, everything. So then Jesus begins to work in uh, with this in this aspect with her so he asked for water and she told him how can you be a jew ask me for water and then he says if you knew the gift of god and who is here asking you for water you would ask me for water and i would give you water see jesus now begins to introduce to her the solution to man's soul, uh, the thirst and the emptiness for the ones who are incomplete. So Jesus begins by saying, if you knew who I am, you would be the one who would be asking me for water, and I would give you water. And then she tells, well, if you don't even have, have water for you, how can you offer me water? So, my brethren, evangelization is something that happens in this way. Many times when you begin to pre present your life, your testimony, many times when you begin to share what you are experiencing in Jesus, when you begin to want to share and relay your blessing, people, many times, they want to get uh, put... Uh, a barrier, complicate, take the focus out of it, or go to another topic, and then is this, and now I think this, I think like that. Isn't that in this way that things should happen? But in the way that Jesus began to overcome those barriers, in the way that Jesus patiently 
persisting like Jesus completely inside of the project that he took on with the Father, he began to share with her something that she did not know. Jesus began to show to her something that was not she could not understand with her hum human reason and her understanding. Then she said, then he said, he told her, call your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. Then Jesus began to show her the prophetic aspect because evangelization, speaking about God, inside of human reason, inside of human precepts, it doesn't work. But when the servant of God begins to speak about God inside of what is the prophetic project, that's when, when the church uses the means of grace, when the church uses what is eternal, what is spiritual, because this woman, up to that point, she, he, she had a material understanding of things. Looking to the physical thirst, and Jesus was presenting to her a solution to the thirst of the soul. Jesus was presenting to her that, yes, there is a solution to any problem. And you may have entered here tonight. I'm sure you have your problems, and we also have our own problems. But above all, above all understanding and thought that you might have, know of one thing. Jesus is here to break any barrier. Jesus is here to present to you a, sol a complete solution of a problem that you may be going through. Only Jesus has this problem. Only Jesus can go into the center of man's heart, in the center of the problem of man and say look I'm here if you ask for water I will give you and you understand the mystery you understand the prophecy because the church when the church presents what is prophetic what is spiritual what is the project of God there is no obstacle there is no impediment there is nothing that may overcome God's project. The best way for you to speak with God is when you apply the prophecy. John the Baptist, he was the last prophet, and he said, May I diminish, but may Jesus, salvation, the project, may grow more and more in man's life. What is important is not what we have what we have experienced in the sense that it's not we have in, in the cultural aspect we can have to offer, but it is what we have to offer from God's uh, side. No, that's what we need to be praying, we need to be involved in what is God's project because when we are under administration from the Lord, when we are taken over by the Holy Spirit, God uses you. And whatever you say, God will honor because we will speak with grace coming from God because we are going to present something that comes from the part of God and Jesus says truly you don't have any commitment you don't have commitment with anything you need to have see this you need to understand and she begins to argue she begins once again to try to take the focus out of that aspect and take Jesus out of his own objective and she begins to present who she was what she be she had and Jesus begins to answer with a lot of love and care he begins to say to her look she asks oh, so let's go where should we praise the Lord? Is it here or there? People come with their own human understanding, their arguments, their knowledge. But Jesus, He came to show to us that the best way for us to praise the Lord is when we are praise Him in, in spirit and in truth. And when you open up your heart 
And you allow the Spirit of God to lead you to conduct, you, to lead you to know the truth, because the Samaritans, they believed in the same God as the Jews, but they did not accept the Word. They believed in the Pentateuch, the first five books, but they rejected the remaining. They did not accept the remaining books of the Old Testament. So what is shown the geneal genealogy of Jesus, so that's why he said, you praise, you pray to something that you don't believe. And we know we pray praise something that we believe because salvation comes from the Jews. It, so we will see the genealogy of Jesus. It goes through the Old Testament. Presenting what? Jesus as the true one who was sent by God. Many times man, he tries to cancel this. He finds a verse, he try, finds a human understanding from someone to try to cancel what is prophetic, what is the prophets, and just keep history. History has its worth regarding Jesus who came, who was born of Mary, he was born, he died. There is, a, there is worth to this. But above all, what matters for us, what leads us to God, what what is important is that we know the prophecy through the life of Jesus and to know that Jesus came and he was sent by God. He, Jesus came to show to man the way that leads man to live moments here on this life, moments of joy, moments of happiness, moments of trial, yes, but moments in which we're going to have our own trials and difficulties but the Lord will bring comfort. God will direct us. God is going to show us how we're going to be able to overcome everything that may come in our lives. And they believed in it. The two worshipers. Time is coming. Time is, it is. That the two worshipers are going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because they worship God but they rejected the truth but now we are having the opportunity you who entered here you are having the opportunity to know the truth surely you know the Bible you know that God exists you know everything that God needs wants to do but man needs to have knowledge of the truth and the truth is Jesus it's not enough for you to know the spirit or to know the story of God what God wants for man what God has for man God's project for man is not enough for you to just have knowledge and not leaving the truth who is Jesus and tonight the Lord has brought you here because he wants you to have your own experience it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter your situation. But you can be sure of one thing. Jesus came here. He changed his project. He changed his trajectory. All to, to have this meeting with you here tonight. We are not here by chance. God's time is above our own time. You came here because God wants tonight to show to you and point out to you that there truly is, there is hope. There is, yes, there is solution. Yes, there is a way for you to say, I am a true worshiper. I praise God in spirit and in truth because I know the way. Because I, I had my personal experience. Jesus entered into my heart. The prophecy of God was able to reach me. The, God's project was able to reach me. My thirst, my hunger, my desperation, desperation, my anguish, my suffering, everything was taken away. From the moment I drank of the water of life, 
the water that is going to quench and will always quench the desperation and thirst that is in the heart. Jesus once, now David once said that my, my soul thirsts for God. Man thirsts for God. The creation thirsts for the Creator because we came from God. We were formed by God. We have, we are like God. The Bible says, may, let us make man according to our, our likeness. So we have what comes from God. The soul was given by God. And our soul wishes to go back to God. So tonight, Jesus is calling you, is inviting you to have the same experience that this woman had. It doesn't matter your biblical understanding. It doesn't matter your understanding regarding God. What is important is that you open up your heart and you say tonight, yes, I want. I want to know Jesus. I want God to take a hold of my life. I want God to take control of my home, take control of my health, take control of the situation in which we are um, living. I want God to take control and that God may be the pilot of my boat and that may be able to help me overcome the waves that rise up, the difficulties that come, the attacks and the obstacles. Only Jesus can do this tonight. Amen. May God bless us. And you go, whatever you are, you open up your heart and you ask the Lord for blessing. Lord, may I experience this. There may not have any impediment or barrier that may prevent you, me from knowing Jesus. Everything, all of this has been broken. Jesus came, he overcame death, he overcame the pain. Jesus was victorious and he broke everything that prevented you from having a life in God's presence. And tonight is a night where you can open up your heart because the meeting with Jesus, the meeting with Jesus, leads man to the recognition, to know that there is a, a better life in God's presence. Let's hear a song.
Lord to Jesus. What is important is that we experience, live the prophetic, what is already being determined by God. The physical realm where you're going to praise the Lord here or there, it doesn't matter. What is important is that you understand and you accept the word, accept the project of salvation of man, believe in Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross, his blood that was shed, but on the third day he resurrected. And today he is the truth. What is important is that we praise him with our actions, with our heart filled with gratitude for the salvation of Jesus. What is important for us tonight is that you, we understand this, that we need, that we need to have Jesus in our hearts. There is no other way or other solution other than this one that we need to surrender to this word, the word of God. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise the Lord because you are the only God of our life. You are the one who one day has rescued us to bring us into your holy presence and to reveal to us every day that you are the only way that we have to walk on. Because we, we have the assurance that one day we're going to live with you, we're going to be with you in eternity, to walk with you, Lord, to be, Lord, enjoying of everything that you have set apart for the ones who accepted you with all their hearts. That's what well, we want to offer you our praise, Lord, tonight. Our gratitude for, for our salvation, for everything that you have done and that you do, and that you, I'm sh we are sure that you will do much more, Lord, because there are many things that you need to do for the ones to serve you in spirit and in truth. That's why we praise you, Lord, because our heart tonight is filled with peace, with its happiness, because this happiness only the Lord can give us. We cannot find this outside of the world, but in your presence we are happy and more than victorious every day. That's why we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Because we have you our own as our only and sufficient Savior. We praise you, therefore, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. As we prayed for the service tonight, the Lord gave us a couple of prophetic signs, spiritual gifts to the brethren who were praying for the service so that we could all receive a blessing from the Lord and during the spirit of prayer the Lord was showing the situation of a woman who is here. She came here seeking a comfort for her soul because she, I'm going to read the gift that we received She's she was very sad and anguished because she's going through a moment that is very difficult in her familial life. But tonight, the Lord wants to give her peace, security, and control, and to tell her that in Jesus, there is, yes, there is hope. Hope is in Jesus. It is not in the name or label or a denomination, no. Hope is only in Jesus. Jesus, when he, he met with the disciples after his resurrection, the first thing that he said was, be, peace be with you. Because the peace that Jesus gives is the peace that the world does not have. When Jesus is able to reach man's heart, he resolves the problem. Jesus comes, this is one is, is his characteristic when Jesus saves a soul he touches man's heart he touches and removes the thirst completely everything else anything from this life everything is fleeting 
it will pass. And everything that we find in the world, solutions, everything goes back. Resolved right now, but tomorrow we're going to be going through the same problem. But when Jesus comes, he reaches man's heart, he solves the problem. That's what he said to that woman. If you drink of this water, this well, tomorrow we'll be thirsty again. In a few hours we'll be thirsty again, like I am thirsty. But if you drink of the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. And from you will spring up uh, uh, waters that will jump to eternal life. So that's what Jesus is offering you tonight. You just need to open up your heart and take this peace to you. There's another spiritual gift that was saying that there's there was another man here that does not have a, a deep experience with the Lord, but with everything that he has seen, the geopolitical events that are taking place, we are all following what is happening in the world. This man became very cu curious about what is going to happen in the end times. And now the Lord is explaining that the end times is the end of times is with Jesus because if we are with Jesus our end will be an eternity in God's presence there cannot have any other result any other meaning other than this one any other outcome like this other than this one our lives needs to be in Jesus' arms amen may the Lord bless us let's close our eyes May the Lord bless us in a special way tonight. Lord, we praise your name for yet another night in your presence. Because once again, Lord, we're going to leave your house quenched with our hearts filled with joy, with peace, with health. We're going to leave your presence comforted with consolations, because we know that you are in control of all things. And that's why tonight, Lord, once again we come up to your house to express to you our gratitude, to offer to you our praise, and to ask that once yet another week you may give us victories, and that we may once again be the target of your love and your mercy and your grace and that your name may continue to be glorified. Receive our service in adoration to you. It's the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to go through the, our moment of assistance. If you desire prayer, we are here available to you. And I'd like to remind the brand new event that is going to take place on the 26th at 9 o'clock in the morning. It was an evangelistic event where the church is going to be participating at this moment with a word that comes from God, a proclamation regarding the, re the return of Jesus. Uh, I want to uh, wish you all the peace of the Lord. So raise your hand and we're going to go towards you. <laughs> 